Chinese Kissel fuel pickup and sender for a gas gauge. The interesting thing about this is you'll say, oh, only fits a Kissel. No, actually not true. This is a King Sealy style system, so it fits a number of different makes. And you can't exactly look up online, how do I fix one of these? Or how do I replicate one of these? Because if you don't have one, you're probably going to have to replicate it. In this case, we are going to replicate it. Because what I'm holding is for my all-year Coupe Roadster, which is also a 1926 Kissel, that someday I'm going to restore, so I don't want to give up this one, because I need one for a model. So I'm going to replicate this, and we're going to show you how you do it, and how it works. So the first thing we're going to do is get to kind of how it works. I'm going to explain it to you, but we're going to draw it in a moment. If you look here on the top, there are two tubes coming out of a circular, fairly thick steel plate. There's actually a third tube mounted in here, but it doesn't come out the top. The center tube here is a 5 16 fuel pickup. The outside tube on this side is a 1 quarter inch tube this is reduced down on this end to 1 8 which is actually going to be an air line going to the gas gauge because this gas gauge works on air pressure. The opposite tube which doesn't come out the top is also quarter inch. It's merely fastened to this same circular plate that we have at the top. On the bottom here we have a bell that allows the fuel pickup in the center. So the fuel pickup just runs down here to the bottom has a nice screen to keep junk from going in. Then you have this solid piece, which is hollow inside, that allows the other two tubes to go down into it. The tube on the one side, which as you see does not go through the top, has a vent in the top of it. Right below the plate there's a little hole there, that's a vent. That's this tube. The opposite tube here you can't see has a hole at the bottom of the tube and then we use this column of air when there's fuel in the tank to actually read the pressure and tell us how much fuel is in the tank. So I'm going to give you a little drawing so that you understand exactly how that looks inside. At the top we have that plate. We're going to look at this as a side view. On this side we have a tube coming down. This is our vent tube. That has a hole up here at the top. So this is the vent tube. And this is our plate right there. In the center, going clear down to the bottom, this is your tube for fuel. That's your fuel pickup. On the opposite side, we have a tube that goes down here. And this is your air line to the gas gauge. This particular tube with the vent actually goes down almost to the bottom inside the bell. So now we'll put the bell around everything's dashes. Obviously we had a screen here at the bottom. Here your vent tube goes almost to the bottom. This tube only goes down part way. If I got it really right in the drawing, I probably should have this tube really right up here at the top. But this is your air line again. The purpose of the vent on this side is merely to make sure that we don't ever overpressure the gauge, just in case, so we don't overpressure the gauge. Now, the one other thing going on with this bell is there's a little hole that allows gas to get in here which drives this column of air and changes your gas gauge. If we didn't have that hole we wouldn't have any fuel in here and the reason it's put in a bell is to deal with the fact that fuel sloshes as the car moves this keeps the fuel from sloshing. So we are going to build a new version of this. To do that we're going to do a few things. The top we're going to use a little bit different fittings which are going to make this more user friendly. The original fittings here are soldered in place, which isn't quite as nice as if we could actually remove everything and disassemble it. So we've got compression fittings that we're going to use that allow us to disassemble things. 
This one is 5 16 to 5 16. This one being quarter to the 1 8 that we are using for our airline that goes to the gas gauge. The bottom we're going to make out of a couple of copper pipe caps. And I'm going to grab one of those and show you what that's like. This is a copper pipe cap. Now I've actually got two of these. I'm going to turn one down to slide inside the other. We'll solder that together and we'll make a series of holes in the top. One quarter, five sixteenths, one quarter to solder our tubes in at the right height. We'll put a screen on the bottom soldered and we'll have of course our fuel pickup and our hole when we're done. This particular sort of crummy looking piece of brass which I've routinely used to beat things out without hurting them. I'm going to take a chunk of this and I'm going to turn it down into a plate for the top portion of this. And it's actually going to be made a little thicker because I can do that and I have the ability to set it up that way but I'm going to make it out of this piece. So that gives you an idea of what the project's going to be. All right, here we are on the miniature Sherline lathe and mill, turning down one of the ends. And as you can see, it's at fast forward, so you don't have to be bored to death. This is one of those pipe caps I talked about. There are two of them. One you have to turn down on the outside. The other one you have to bore on the inside. You're looking for about a four thousandths fit between them, four thousandths gap. The purpose is we're going to actually solder that. So they do not have to fit tightly. In fact, that would be wrong. You couldn't solder them well. So as you can see, I'm turning this down. And instead of doing it real time where you'd be bored, we're doing it speeded up action. At this point, you can see we're in speeded up action still. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn a square piece of that brass material that I showed you earlier, that brass bar, that is mounted onto a bolt with a couple of nuts, etc and set up so I can turn it in the Sherline miniature lathe. Now this portion when I first start out is going to be done by hand. The reason it's done by hand is obviously we're going to turn a square into a circle. We're going to hit just the four corners. That's going to be a little rough and doing it with the power feed that I've added to the machine is probably not the best idea. And so I'm doing it by hand and the slow hand cranking method. So when we get set up here that's all I'm going to do is slowly hand crank it across until I get much closer to having a circle, at which time, of course, I can use my power feed that I've added to this particular little machine. There's a DRO set up in the background. Let's me set the information for where I am, where I'm feeding to fairly accurately. In this case, I'm taking off very small amounts, probably not more than five thousandths. We're not going to show you all that, but about five thousandths at a time, just because all we're doing is hitting corners when we first start out. Later on, you can take deeper cuts than five thousandths. Here we are mostly done with creating the circle the way we want to. You can see I'm using the power feed. It's turning all by itself there on the y-axis. If you want to know about power feeding this particular lathe and what we did, you can actually look that up in one of the other videos and see exactly how we did that if you want to make that modification yourself. So here we're using the power feed. All I'm doing is readjusting the feed on the x-axis, laying the y-axis power feed each time. So the machine's giving me a beautiful finish, getting this done relatively quickly for me. And very shortly, because of the power feeding, we'll switch to the vertical mill. Now, one thing you'll notice in the background here, I've used one of these Sherline extensions. That's the square portion at the bottom. You'll also see a silver portion in the middle. That is a aluminum piece extension that I actually turned on the lathe to make the mill even taller. You'll notice I'm using the Sherline rotary table. It's particularly useful for this. The center hole was pre-drilled the correct size when we were actually putting that square piece on the lathe. The two side holes are being drilled the correct size now. Remember, only one of the two holes goes all the way through. And of course, the rotary table allows us to put the holes exactly the same dimension side to side apart. There is no specified dimension for this. It is more related to that you can get it through the hole in your fuel tank. So this is not what you call critical. It's just kind of neat that you can do a rotary table and make it extremely accurate without even trying to. You'll notice a little waddling in the video. 
This is something that is not in need of being so accurate that I had to stop the wobbling. Remember, it is speeded up. If I have to make it more accurate, I can. Some of the, one of these days, we're actually going to show you something unbelievably accurate made on this machine. You take different precautions, different setups, and you can make things more accurate than you can possibly imagine. We've rotated around, and the first hole I did not show that I used a center drill. Always use a center drill first. Center drill does not walk. Regular drills will walk. You will notice that, and your parts won't end up in alignment where you want them to be. Always center drill first, and you can enlarge with other drills later to the size that you need. Here you can see we're coming back with our drill to put the third hole in. Later on, you'll find out exactly what drill sizes I used. So if you want to know those, they're coming up later on in the video. Almost done with this drilling. Almost finished with this particular plate. All right, here we have the mostly assembled unit. We have one part missing, which is our fitting we're going to put up here in the end. And as Trish brings it in, we're going to explain a number of things about the finished replication. And it isn't a copy. It is actually better than the original. Because if I'm going to make this part, part you can't see but you want totally functional, you really want to make it good. I figure I might as well make it so it outlasts the car. So, here we have various changes have been made. We made our bottom, as you know and saw, out of pipe caps. These are one inch diameter. The large one here, meaning from the line up, is actually turned down inside. We bored it out. About 25 thousandths. The smaller one, which we turned down from a pipe cap, that's the lower portion, is actually turned down about 25 thousandths. Now notice I said about, because it's more of a slip fit between the two, so this one inserts into this one with about four thousandths between them so that you can solder them together. And the two, as you can see, are soldered together. At the top, as you saw before, we drilled a series of holes. The top one is drilled one quarter for your vent on one side and one quarter on the opposite side right here for your line to your gauge. The center is the 5 16 pickup for the fuel. Now you can't finish out those holes with those drills. You actually have to use an F size drill, that's a letter drill, for the two outside holes so the tubes will slide in. And the center hole is an O size drill so that that tube will slide in. Now the O size drill is used top and bottom because we come all the way through with that fuel line. So the fuel line is merely passing through this piece. It's not open to the inside here. And on the bottom you'll notice the fuel line's been flared and it's soldered to the bottom cap, soldered to the top. The two sides, the vent side, has its tube running almost to the bottom. And it's soldered here in the top, open on the bottom, and at the top here, we've got a little cut in it, so this is a true vent. This is an overpressure vent, so that we don't ever get too much pressure in the opposite line going to the gauge. The bottom, as you look at it again, you'll see a little hole. This hole is drilled through so that this chamber will fill with fuel and allow the gauge to actually read a column of fuel. So that's what the hole is for there. On the bottom you'll notice we have a copper screen which we formed all the way around the bottom and I use JB Weld which will be 100% fuel proof after it's fully cured. So you want to say four or five days before you actually put fuel in it to make sure it's absolutely cured. But we use JB Weld to hold that on. Everything else is soldered, but this makes this really easy to do because the screen is so fine you don't want to actually burn it up or have problems soldering it. Now if we look at the top, we used a thicker plate up here than was used originally. We made this out of brass and of course turned it as we showed you. And what we've got here, the hole for the one quarter line for the vent only goes part way through the top. You see it doesn't go through all the way. That allowed us to solder that into the top. Part of the reason we made it thicker. The center, remember we're using an O-sized drill to bring the 5 16 line through, soldered it in. And to bring the quarter inch line through, we've used the F-sized drill. We've also made our lines 
up top longer than original. They had different fittings that they actually soldered originally at Kissel, but they're soldered super short. And we'll show you the original again. We've made these longer so it's more serviceable, easier to get a wrench on. But we have also kept them close together because you have to be able to pass this particular collar which fastens this to the fuel tank down like that. So you want to keep your lines together. One other item, and we're going to show you the original one for this particularly, is there is a dimension that matters. Your dimension here is so you can get it in the tank. Dimensions of the pipe matter. The exact placement across here, I just made them of course equal. But what's important is the dimension from the base of that plate to the bottom of that fuel pickup comes out to be essentially pretty close to ten and a half inches. So I shot for this dimension from the base of this plate to the bottom of the fuel pickup there being ten and a half inches. Now you see when you look at the two of them, this one is all brass, copper, and of course just the JB Weld, made to be very permanent. This one over here has got the really short pieces here, which, as I said, that's really hard and not real serviceable. So I switched them to be longer. And as I said, none of this actually will show on the car, but it's totally vital it operates. So I would say we've made a bit of an improvement in constructing our new one. And that's how, in general, to do a King Sealy early system fuel pickup and our actual gauge pickup. And just for your reference, if you want to know about this, there is a uh, issue of skin knuckles earlier this year, this 2018, I think it's about May, that has an article on this. And we're not going to show you that because of course there's a copyright thing, but that's a place you can look for more information on this type of gauge system.